Okay, we've talked about F closure, and remember, F closure refers to all the functional dependencies logically implied. Okay? So we have a set of functional dependencies, F. Everything logically implied is called F closure. Now we're going to introduce something called X closure. Now typically X closure is written with an X and a little plus sign in superscript format. Now the X refers to one or more attributes from our relation. Okay, so F closure is a set of function pencils logically implied. X closure is a set of attributes that may be derived by applying Armstrong's axioms. X closure is a set of attributes derivable by applying Armstrong's axioms. Let's take a look at an example. What is A closure? Okay. Well, A closure will start off with the letter A, and we see that A function determines D, so we'd have D in our set. And then by transitivity, we say, well, if A gives D and D gives B, we would have B in our set, and then since we have B, B would function determine C, we'd also add C. So in this case, A closure, everything that's derivable by applying Armstrong's axioms, is A, B, C, D. Let's try another one. Let's try D closure. Well, D closure will start off with the D by reflexivity. And since D function determines B, we would add the B. Also, since B function determines C by transitivity again, we would have C. So in this case, D closure would be D, B, C. Okay. Let's try one more. Let's try E closure. Well, E closure starts off with the E. We see E function determines B, so we add the B there. B, by transitivity, B function determines C, so we add the C there. And are we done at that point? Yes, we are, because we cannot derive any other attributes. So E closure would be E, B, C. As you recall from our definition of a key, an attribute or a set of attributes is a key if it function determines all the attributes in R. So if I had A, C, E, and I wanted A, C, E closure, I would have A, and uh, A function determines D, so I'd have a D. I'd obviously have the C, I'd have the E. And since D function determines B, I would have A, B, C, D. So it looks like we have a key, right? Not exactly. Because if you recall, here the closure did find all the attributes in R, but we need to know whether or not it is minimal, okay? Now let's try, for example, AE closure. Well, we know from before, A closure was A, B, C, D. Obviously that includes the E. So AE closure function determines all the attributes in R, so it looks like AE might be a key, and if that's the case, that's not minimal, because we reduce ACE to AE. Now, as we had seen with the example for A closure and E closure, neither one of those had all the attributes in R, so we would say that AE is a key. Now, is this the only key? Maybe, maybe not. We will look at this in the future lesson in terms of how do you figure out the keys using X closure and Armstrong's axioms. 
As you recall, we recently mentioned that Armstrong's axioms are sound. What that means is if we find any functional dependencies by applying Armstrong's axioms, they will be inside of F closure. Okay? So here's F. Here's F closure, the set there. Armstrong's axioms, by saying it's sound, would not go outside of the F closure. Now we also want to say that Armstrong's axioms are complete. By saying Armstrong's axioms are complete, that means if there's a logically implied functional dependency inside of F closure, we're going to find it. So Armstrong's axioms will find, you know, X function term is Y, X function term is B. Whatever the case may be, Armstrong's axioms, you know, will find all those functional dependencies within F closure. Okay? So we have this notion of sound and we have this notion of complete. Now if you look within the notes, I provide a, the proof for the corresponding theorem. I do recommend you take a look at that and make sure you understand that. Now what can we do with this fact that Armstrong's axioms sound and complete? Well by knowing Armstrong's axioms are sound and complete, we would have F logically implies X function determines Y. By the fact that Armstrong's axioms are sound, you know, we're going to have something logically implied by F. We're not going to get anything that's not logically implied. And this is true if and only if Y is a subset of X closure. And that is true by the notion that Armstrong's axioms are complete. Well, what does this do for us? Well, we know by the notion of Armstrong's axioms being sound, F of A, that is everything derivable with Armstrong's axioms, will be in the subset of F closure. And by complete, F closure is a subset of F of A. So the result is F, of clo F closure equals everything we can derive with Armstrong's axioms. So this gives us the mechanism through Armstrong's axioms for determining whether or not a functional dependency is in F closure and it also lets us know we found every possible one if we're looking for it.